हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस सिक्स न्यूमेरिकल ऑफ फ्रिक्शन चैप्टर लेट अस रीड द स्टेटमेंट फर्स्ट द कोफिशंट्स ऑफ फ्रिक्शन बिटवीन ब्लॉक एंड द रेल आर म्यू एस इज इक्वल टू पॉइंट थ्री जीरो एंड म्यू के इज इक्वल टू पॉइंट टू फाइव नोइंग डेट थीटा इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटी फाइव डिग्रीज डिटर्मिन द वैल्यू ऑफ पी रिक्वायर्ड टू स्टार्ट द ब्लॉक मूविंग अप द रेल टू कीप इट फ्रॉम मूविंग डाउन so we have solved a similar problem in the previous video so let us uh, see what is given in this particular problem we are given this diagram and in this diagram we are shown one rail and this rail has an in, uh, inclination of 35 degrees with the horizontal and on this rail one block is placed and uh, to that block two levers are attached on one lever its weight is shown in vertical downward direction it is of 500 newton the other lever lever is at uh, an angle of 65 degrees with the horizontal it is mentioned theta over here and theta mentioned in the statement as 65 degrees and on that lever one force is applied which is labeled as p so he is asking us to find determine the value of p this p required in the a part to start the block moving up the rail so to start the block moving up the rail means motion is impending motion is just about to start in our direction so let us first draw its free body so in order to draw the free body we will draw the rail first we have shown the rail and the inclination of the rail with the horizontal is 35 degrees on that rail we have placed the block and we have shown the point of application for these two le levers now let us label the forces so the first force to label in this free body is the weight of the block so on this point of application let me show its weight it is acting in downward direction and uh, the weight is 500 newton after labeling weight weight of the block let us show the normal pressure normal pressure is always at 90 degrees to the inclined surface over here the surface is rail so let us label this as n apart from these two forces there is third force given to us which is mentioned as p so p is acting at this lever so let us show that force as well so see it is also apply uh, also applied at the same point of application so from the same point of application i will draw that force here let us label this as p now see i have shown this particular vector over here only so this you can do because we are using uh, law of transmissibility this is the line of action of the force so on this line of action of the of the force you can show point of application anywhere there will be no issue this is we are doing to make the free body uh, more clear okay so now we will we have to talk about the frictional force now he is asking us that determine the value of p required to start the block moving up the rail that means uh, the motion is considered uh, up the incline it means friction will act in opposite direction that means in downward direction so let us show that frictional force in downward direction over here tangential to the rail so it is acting in downward direction tangential to rail so let us call this as f so we have labeled all the forces given in this particular problem now we have to consider x axis and y axis so let us extend this inclined surface and along the incline we will consider x axis normal to incline we will consider y axis now you see this particular friction force is acting along x axis so we there is no need to resolve this similarly normal pressure is acting along y axis no need to resolve this as well but if we will talk about uh, weight weight is acting at some angle to x axis and y axis it means we have to show its two components so let us show those two components here so this is the point of application from that point we will construct we will draw two dashed lines this is along y axis and from the same point of application we will draw second component and it is along x axis now the arrowhead is pointing towards the point of application so on these two components also arrowheads will be towards the point of application 
now if this angle is theta this angle will also be theta so it is given as 35 degrees so this is 35 degrees so we are considering this angle so this axis is cos axis this will be sin axis so let us label this component first we will label it as 500 cos 35 degrees and this will become 500 sin 35 degrees now let us see the last force in this free body that is P now P is also acting at some angle to x axis and y axis it means we have to uh, draw the components of this particular force as well so this is a point of application from that point of application we will draw one component along x-axis this component is along x-axis from the same point of application draw the second component this component is along y-axis arrowhead is moving away from the point of application so draw arrowheads moving away from the point of application in these two components as well now we have to consider the angle of this particular force with this particular axis so for that we have to see the data given to us now you see over here we are given that P has theta degrees with the horizontal so theta is mentioned in the problem as 65 degrees it means uh, from this point of application if I draw a horizontal line let me draw a dashed horizontal line so this particular angle this angle this total the angle of this particular force with the horizontal it is how much theta theta is 65 so this force has 65 degrees with this horizontal line but one very important part to understand that this particular component is parallel to the inclined surface so it means this particular angle between inclined surface and horizontal same angle is applicable here also with this component and the horizontal so this is 35 degrees but total is how much total is 65 total is 65 minus 35 so this is the remaining angle which is 25 degrees sorry it is 65 65 minus 35 it is 30 degrees so we have found the angle of force with this component so this will be cos component this is sine sin component so let us label this as p cos 30 degrees and this will be p sin 30 degrees now we are ready with the free body so let us start with the a part so what he says in a part determine the value of p required to start the block moving up the rail start the block means motion is impending that means we can use summation fx is equal to 0 and summation fy equal to 0 let us apply the first equation summation fx is equal to 0 so how many forces are there acting in x direction first is p cos 30 it is acting towards right so it is positive second is 500 sine 35 degrees it is acting along left direction so it is negative next is frictional force it is acting along left direction so we will take this also as negative so we will write p cos 30 degrees minus 500 sin 35 degrees minus f is equal to 0 so we will write f as mu s n because we know frictional force is equal to coefficient of static friction multiplied by nominal pressure is equal to zero why we are taking coefficient of static friction over here because he says to start the block it means motion is impending so if the motion is impending then we have to use coefficient of static friction so in this equation we know the value of mu s that is how much 0 0.30 but uh, there are two variables in this equation normal pressure and p so we can't solve this equation let us call this equation as one for time being now let us uh, apply the second equation that is summation fy is equal to 0 so how many forces are acting in y direction first is 500 cos 35 acting in downward direction this will be negative p sin 30 it is acting in upward direction this will be positive normal pressure acting in upward direction this will be positive so equation will become n plus p sin 30 degrees minus 500 cos 35 degrees equal to 0 so from here we will get value of n it will be equal to 500 cos 35 degrees minus p sin 30 degrees now we will say put the value of n in above equation so we will say put value of n 
in equation 1. Now when you will put this value in above equation, the whole equation will be in terms of p because we know the value of coefficient of static friction that is given to us as 0 0.30. So from that equation we will find the value of p. Let me write that value. So you will get p as 404 newtons. So this is the answer of a part. Now let us solve b part. What he says in b part? To keep it from moving down means we have to prevent it from moving down it means tendency of the block in the b part is to move down it means friction force will act in opposite direction that is in upward direction so in b part the free body will remain same but in this free body we have to reverse the direction of frictional force because he is saying to prevent it from moving down it means tendency of block is to move down it means friction will act in upward direction for B part so in this particular free body only change will be that in B part we will consider the direction of friction force in upward direction it means again we will use these two equations because it is a case of motion is impending when you will use these two equations everything will remain same only change will be the sign of frictional force earlier in the a part friction force was acting in downward direction towards left side we consider it as negative but now in b part friction force is acting in upward direction so we are considering this as uh, direction towards right so we take the, that direction as positive so everything will remain same for b part only thing is we will change this sign so let us apply summation fx is equal to 0 for b part so same equation we will write p cos 30 degrees minus 500 sine 35 degrees in place of minus we have to use plus mu s still mu s we have to use because it is a case of motion is impending just about to start call this as equation number 2 now we will apply the second equation summation f y equal to 0 so same value we will get that is n equal to 500 cos 35 degrees minus p sine 30 degrees then we will say put value of n in equation 2 so when you will put the value of n in this equation the complete equation will be in terms of p because we know value of mu s as 0 0.30 so from here you will get value of p and it will be equal to 229 newtons i hope the procedure of solving this particular numerical is clear to you so let me revise again in the a part he was saying find the value of p to start the block moving up the rail start the block means motion is impending so summation fx summation fy are applicable and in this case the tendency of the block is to move in our direction so we considered frictional force in downward direction so over here we took negative sign so as is the this is the case of motion is impending so we used coefficient of static friction in the b part he was asking to keep it from moving down means to prevent it from moving down means tendency of the block is to move down so for b part in the free body only change will be that frictional force will act in opposite direction in upward direction so everything will remain same in the b part but we will change this sign to positive sign and uh, we will use coefficient of static friction because b part is also the case of motion is impending and we will get the answer for p that is 229 newtons for b part as well i hope this particular numerical is clear to you thank you very much